Welcome to the Hero Escape Podcast, your weekly escape from the people outside of your headphones that you're trying to ignore right now. I am one of your three co-hosts, Halisham Bandersnatch, and I am joined by <laughs> Jake Lesson and Long Branch Penny Whistle. Welcome to this week's episode. There's lots of exciting things in the world of nerdery, and today we're going to preview some of the news and big hit items out there focusing around the... One and only DC Universe. Nathaniel, what's on the hot list for today? There are a whole bunch of things going on. I think probably one of the most significant is that finally and at last, last week, the Justice League was available to people. Ba, 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 ba. For home Digitally, video. if you want the Blu-ray, sorry. Yes. The so Blu-ray what's up is with coming that? out later, right? March something? March uh, something. Second week of March yeah. or something like that? Yeah. So Nathaniel, what's up with that? You guys are the IT guys here. Like, what, Is that like they're trying to get away from having to pay people to make? Do they want us to buy it digitally rather than on disc? I mean, I mean, I think of bigger profit I, margins. I mean, I, I don't know the process, right? But I think if I was selling movies to people, the digital copy is already there. All the movies are digital already, right? So yeah. why would I want to add an additional cost of... and? process of having them so you can mark it up I don't, I don't know depending on who I you're guess. selling through like i have to imagine itunes takes a huge cut of their profits yeah. but yeah your profit margin is probably higher on the digital so if think. you front load it like that that means anyone who is sort of 50 50 that would have grabbed the physical if they just saw it in the store mm-hmm. They're now going to get the digital instead. And I guess that's got to be purchase. the only reason for it because I would think why also, would you right? shortcut your own disc sales unless it's going to make you more money? But okay, whatever. Uh, also, I think you, if you control the files digitally, it's more it keeps movies from leaking early, right? These. Uh, well, I'm not going to buy it digitally. I'm going to wait for the disc to come out because then I'm I got it on same. a disc and I get it digitally because they give you all three now: DVD, Blu-ray, and digital. When you buy it, when you so it's DVD for my kids to ruin, the Blu-ray for me to keep safe, <laughs> and digital for in the future when I don't when want you, discs anymore. When you give your files to some company you contract out to stamp a bunch of or make a bunch of DVDs and Blu-rays, you are no longer in control of that. So now you got just yeah. some maybe some They're young guys the that work man, there that just okay. drive yeah, pallet jacks whatever. around of DVDs. I'm excited to watch the movie again. I remember when we all went to go watch it when it came out. I enjoyed it. I'm, I want to watch it again and see if I can look past the mis- malformed upper lip of Henry <laughs> Cavill so as Superman. I did watch it again. Did you watch it again? I watched. I got a digital copy of it, Heart. and uh, I do feel like they tried to correct it some. You think not they terribly it up successfully? Just a no, mm-hmm. I mean, I was. It wasn't real successful. But I think it, it feels to me like they tried because I didn't feel. But maybe it just jumped out at me because it was so shocking the first time. But yeah, it, uh, I thought this doesn't seem as bad. Did they try to clean it up? Yeah. So an important PSA for anyone who's listening to this is maybe considering between the digital and the physical news has already come out that there's a discrepancy in the special bonus features between digital and physical because the oh. bonus features were announced that are going to be on the physical. And then, of course, everyone who goes out and buys the digital is looking feverishly for all of these things. And it was sort of documented that some were missing. And it seemed to be inconsistent depending on who you bought it through. Like if you got mm. if you got it through Microsoft on the Microsoft Store versus Apple iTunes, you were getting different bonus features. So if you are a hound for bonus features, wait for the Blu-ray. That's, That's I, peculiar. Love, I, I love bonus features. It's like the weirdest thing about me and my we love if we like the movie, we totally want to eat up the bonus features. That's so peculiar that they would have different versions of the digital file. I know. It makes, well, it makes sense. doesn't that maybe that'll let us let us anything will leak about uh, the whole change? Do you think they're going to talk about it all from Zack Snyder to Josh? Uh, I think that's probably what happened. Is that you know Zack Snyder put together the the digital version, and then they brought in Josh Sweden later to put together the physical one, and then they just never mind. <laughs> There's a guy, did you hear about, there's a guy that is, uh, officially put in like a petition or some sort of created, created a entity of some kind of fund or something to get the Zack Snyder release of the, yeah. you know, he's doing it because he's a fanboy of Zack Snyder. I don't like Zack Snyder. I just no, want to see, terrible. I just want to yeah. see what his insane vision of the Yeah, it's morbid was. curiosity, right? Yeah, like, yeah, what is the, the difference? Curiosity. How horrible was this going to be that they yeah. had to reshoot every scene with, ba- with Superman and it was better to have him with a, a robo lip than whatever yeah. Zack Snyder was doing. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, yeah. So you almost want to see it. So does anyways, I, I'd love to see what insight we get from the bonus features. I will, pro- I will yeah. probably totally watch. All well, I know. That. Like what he said, like, Oh, there's some major stuff in there that changes the story kind of thing. I think that was some of the comments like, Oh, there's some, but then one of them I know was just like Superman showing up talking to Alfred. I'm like, this doesn't add anything. 
That was is only that, considered that major because tra- it was a question in the trailer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he looks up in one of the trailers like he said you would come. Is that the one you're talking about? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. yeah like and because this went through so many. nothing to anything. Yeah. Because the yeah. movie went through so many the, cuts, recuts, and honestly, reshoots that wasn't in the movie at all. So people were wondering. Yeah. The story of Justice League in the changing of the trailers is almost as interesting of entertainment as watching the movie. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Because yeah. it changed so much from whatever Zack Snyder's yeah. dark vision probably was to... Yeah, um, I actually, when this was coming out, I went and rewatched the Justice League trailer, one of the original first, first uh, yeah. one or two trailers, and uh, I was like, oh, there's so much in this trailer that is not in the movie. movie it's insane. Right? What's yeah, going yeah. on? I'm like, and it's not like... When Thor Ragnarok came out, where he lands with the lightning, and the lightning's coming out of both eyes, and then yeah. you watch the movie, Which you can understand, and that I'm, scene is he has one movie. eye. Yeah, they're trying to save the spoiler, you right? It's not why. that kind of a change. It's like the movie, the sun exists, to the sun doesn't exist. Being yeah, a change. only like, a Thor fanboy would notice that one eye was missing his lightning. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or all the women who are like, oh, I don't like that he lost his eye, which is every woman I've talked to about that movie. But anyway. Pirate Thor. <laughs> Some interesting news has come out along with that, though. There was a story that you can't, I don't know if you'd call it leaking. Essentially, someone that was in the entertainment industry mm-hmm. as a reporter and was sort of, had a lot of sources, left the entertainment industry. So they had no qualms about burning their bridges as they went out. So oh. they essentially told more than one person that if you go back far enough, back into the pre-Justice League rough rough time of post-Batman v Superman, Suicide Squad, and everything that happened around that, that Zack Snyder was actually let go. That he was essentially pushed out. So the public story was, oh, he's had this tragedy. He's bowing out in the 11th hour only yeah. because of that. But this this guy lays out this timeline of the producer who was in charge of the mm. DC movies at Warner Brothers, right? And how they were getting in more and more trouble, shocker, as these movies came out and did terribly, starting with Batman v Superman and mm-hmm. then Suicide Squad. Um, but he, he only made half a billion dollars. Yeah. Essentially, <laughs> there was a link between this producer and Zack Snyder. They were buddy-buddy. They were tight. The producer would defend him, etc. cetera. Yeah. And then it eventually all broke down. The but producer is, was let go. Zack Snyder was let go. I mean, this is a big claim because the story was he like his son died, right? Wasn't that like... Zack Snyder, and that's why he, or the yeah. family tragedy of that scale happens, and he bows out of the movie, which makes perfect sense. Oh, yeah. But then to, to now come out and say, no, he, that was the cover story for him, you know, their excuse to finally fire him. That, well, that's they, kind of big so, deal. Almost, does he think the guy just has an action? Do you believe it? I mean, what do you think, Ms. Well, do I think that it? that actually happened. I mean, there's no doubt about that. The that, timeline is that he got fired before Justice League got started, because yeah, he made, it was he a, started working on Justice League, because in that same, I think, guy, Said that early versions of screenings, kind of or whatever they whatever they do when they showed audiences to get their feedback, they were saying that that version of it was unwatchable. Yeah, that was the quote. <clears throat> Pretty <throat> brutal. So I think yeah. maybe that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Okay. And like, yeah, you're done. So I think really the takeaway from that is that there may be a new day coming for the DC film universe, which I would hope for as a DC fan. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not necessarily inclined for them to hand it over to Ben Affleck per se as a director or producer. <laughs> and I don't think Whedon is going to stay on. So it's going to be interesting to see what future movies hold. Wonder Woman, uh, you know, any sequels there are probably going to be directed by the, the same woman who directed the first one because <laughs> in all of these directors and things they've handed it to, she's the only one that really had a, a good success. Turned in a win. Honest. It's yeah. Yeah. implausible that this will happen, but, uh, I personally, I would prefer to see them shut it all down, give it a couple of years, let's start over again and try to do it right. You know, I feel like with a written apology to David Sachs, with a written apology, yep, with to Andy, everybody, with everybody, Andy say Dwyer. I'm sorry. Steppenwolf wasn't that great of a villain. <laughs> Just list out all of your sins. <laughs> sorry about Batman killing all those people. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sorry about Superman's upper lip. So there has been a um, little sneak peek, the first couple pictures, right, of a new movie coming out. Shazam! Shazam! Yeah. First of all, can I voice, that irritates me because his name is Captain Marvel. He says Shazam to turn into Captain Marvel. True. The problem is DC can't name a character after their They opponent. did it's use like, Cap. They had it. It's been around since like the 20s. I know, He's but been, there's this competitor they have called Marvel <laughs> making better movies. And I'm just saying his name is Captain Marvel. 
And then yeah. Captain Mar- Marvel has so has. Now, I'm not saying it's Captain a Marvel. perfect name, and they DC should probably change it to Sazam, but I don't think they ever officially have. Right. Because no. first of but all, the comic books. What's he the captain of? Right. He just changes into a guy with a cape. That doesn't make you captain of anything. There's nobody. <laughs> there's no. There's no regiment <laughs> underneath him. Right. <laughs> there's no enlisted people he's commanding. You know. <laughs> and uh, so I feel like I feel like Shazam would he be is, a better name. He's the captain of his own destiny. So, you'll have his glory day in the house. I'm questioning all these other fake captains I've had in my life. Captain Kangaroo. You know, <gasps> Captain, Captain Crunch. Crunch. Now, he yeah. actually did command uh, the 101st Kangaroo Legion. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but... You but, heard it here first. So, <laughs> Zachary Levi is playing the part of Shazam, right? Yes. So, those who may not... I'm not good at remembering name. I, I rarely care the name, actor's names. But Zachary Levi, he had a show called Chuck. He was the featured character in that TV show, yeah. Chuck, where he was like a nerd who got downloaded with super spy information and abilities. Um, we were really good. He was also a minor character in the last two uh, movies with Thor. He was one of Thor's buddy called Fandral. He didn't play the part of Fandral in the first Thor movie, but he played the part of Fandral, the blonde guy with the mustache. Um, did just fine mm-hmm. there for the short scenes that he had there. He's a good act. He's, he's kind of pops up a little bit ever. Does some good voice acting. I actually saw him on Sesame Street the other day. My oh, wife recorded saw Now he's arrived. Watching, yes. I watching. He was, a uh, Captain Kindness. Captain Kindness. <laughs> Captain Kind. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we need to we start. Too cavalier or about something. handing out these officer <laughs> titles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bloated military but anyways um government spending uh, man very very anyways i i look forward to, i think he's a good pick for he's a little bit of a, a skinnier guy back when he was doing truck but he's tall yeah dark hair i think they easily can make him fit I'm, he I'm must forward. have had to beef up for this role because shazam in the comics is I mean, he's built like superman he's basically a like the superman gets his powers from the sun shazam gets his powers from magic but they yeah. are like wow they are even one for one, you know, they are. Even I don't know if it's as far as just because set. all of the Shazam comics I've ever read were old or painted by Alex Ross, but he seems like I, he needs to be barrel chested. You know what I mean? Yeah. That old school, you know, yeah. Popeye esque, yeah. whatever. There are newer ones that yeah. are really good, I will say, but yeah, he's supposed to be huge and built. I mean, yeah. he's the, you know, it's the, he gets his gifts from like mythology. So he's like the strength of Hercules and the speed of, Somebody in this intelligence, the wisdom of Solomon, and all these things, you know, they're supposed yeah. to Okay, but he's right. actually a little kid, like the character of Shazam. So the older ones, he was a little kid, Billy Batson, that would say Shazam and turn into. And some of the newer ones, though, he's like a teenager or like a young man. Yeah. Yeah. And then he so says he part of Superman. like his weakness, he doesn't have kryptonite weakness, but his weakness is that he's a little kid still, really, in a big person yeah. body. Right? And it, like, in, the, in the wrong time, or if he gets, he gets knocked out and he changes back to a little kid. So that's his weakness, right? As long as yeah. he can stay in that. Uh, Captain Marvel. If you can, if you can look he's, Shazammy, he's nigh invulnerable. But um. so take this with a grain of salt. But uh, there was a Twitter leak of a photo from the set of Shazam, and the dude in the costume is looking pretty old school. Meaning the costume is the traditional cloth. He's got the the white frilly cape, the mm. design from old school, and the slick back hair. I mean, it's. It's what I would consider old school Shazam. So that's awesome. If you compare that to like, he's got like a lightning bolt on his chest, yeah, he's got right? A big yeah, which is like, dude, how are you trying to a caped version of Flash? Like, what? Are, uh, I don't know. I, I bet. I bet. When I saw that picture, I think this is one of those things where the suit changes in the movie. Like he starts like this, he inherits some ancient magic. I will, and yeah, we just they it. modernize it. You know well, what I'm saying? Even some so. of the new ones, I think, I think he gets more powerful, and the suit becomes like white. So I, I'm uh, curious if they'll do that, and it does change even the newer ones to like a white suit to indicate. That he's more powerful. Because if you look at Justice Captain. League, they they tweaked all the suits. They they've done that all along. So it does seem odd for them to have this one character that they do that they're like, oh, we're gonna stick with the original mm-hmm. frilly laced cape. Yeah. So Dave, you have said I think before that Shazam was one of your favorite characters. What is it that I, you really like about him? Uh, I just thought he, I just I like his personality. He's very much sort of this um, I want to do the right thing, but I I need to learn how kind of guy. You know, sort of. And I he's one of those like. I feel like almost he, he could be as great or, or greater than Superman if he just had like the confidence and maybe some of the breaks that Superman has gotten sort of thing. So it's maybe a little bit my rooting for an underdog who ha- – because there have been times when – in the comics where he has had to go, like go toe-to-toe with Superman. And I think one of them he like – I mean he cleaned Superman's clock. I think one of them he knocks him out cold. So I mean um, I like that that potential is there in him mm. to be there. 
Yeah. So he's super, super powerful. It's one of those, it's like that power scope thing that we talked about before, like mm-hmm. in our Wonder Woman episode. It's like they have a character and they eventually it's like, well, how powerful can we make his power be? And, and mm-hmm. so, yeah, he, he gets to those points where he can, can kind of becomes like a mirror image of Superman kind of with the yeah. different abilities and strengths. And, and but he's always been pretty like, so I think if I think if I go back, I think he predates like, or is almost as early. I mean, he's an old, old comic book hero and it, going way back but yeah there always is power i mean there's you never know there's power creep right i mean like i said mm-hmm, which mm-hmm. you hotly contested that in the current comics wonder woman is supposed to be like off the chart like she's supposed to be they said in the current comics she's physically stronger than superman which i is feel like just, is a little that's like it's like odd, saying but, but that's like wrong right like totally because yeah. like it's like the hulk's thing i'm the strongest there is we don't know why that is but it's like his defining character is i'm the strongest there's mm-hmm. in dc world superman is like I am the strongest superhero. Like, that's my thing. You can't just say you're stronger. I'm Superman, right? Mm. So all of a sudden saying the woman is now stronger. It's like, come on, dude. Just... Plus, she gets paid more than Superman now. Come oh. on. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just, I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> David Sachs. <laughs> Speaking of Wonder Woman, uh, Wonder Woman 2, the villain has been announced. Yes. Yes, which oh. I am very excited about. Um, Dave called it. I, I will give you. I will so give you props, Dave. Some some inside baseball. A long time ago, the the triumvirate here. We met together, and we sort of had this meeting of how could we fix some of these cinematic universes? Cause important we were sort of questions some of that them. important souls contemplate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, uh, my wife thought it was a very valuable use of my time. <laughs> Not at all. Mrs. Smurple uh, worthy. Yeah, yeah. and uh, <laughs> she. Uh, anyway, Wonder I Wonder. thought to my. I said. They need to go with Wonder Woman, classic villain, Cheetah. And so I'm so happy to see that it's being done. Someone must have heard me, I guess. Mm-hmm. I guess somehow the things I say and think are becoming known as the greatest thoughts. David, <laughs> that's your superpower. <laughs> Possibly the super original people at DC who've been looking at Marvel going, hmm, we need to, we need to make more superhero movies. Hey, we need to make an ensemble movie. Hey, they have a really money-making movie involving a cat person. I got a great idea, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stick staying on point and on script might work. So I don't have no idea who the cheetah is for Catwoman or for for Wonder Woman. What the heck? Is, she's just like a hairy girl that says meow or something, or like <laughs> that could be so many characters. Oh, I used to know the oh. backstory. I bet. Yeah, it's no, it. She was like a, a woman who uh, I forget. Somehow she's sort of. It, it's all mythological. She came across, I want to say, some magical artifact that gave her these sort of cheetah-esque powers, and they increased to the point where she became like a like a what's the phrase anthropomorphized type or, or whatever. She is a cheetah in human form, sort of thing. And, mm-hmm. But anyway, she uh, she's got I don't remember her whole power set, and I apologize to all the super cheetah fans out there that I can't. Uh, quote those but she is a very classic villain and and for some reason has a deep hatred for Wonder Woman I'm going to be interested to see Hmm. how they how they modernize that we were just talking about the Shazam costume and I just think with a character like that you have to be very careful to sort of make it grounded in reality and feel authentic I'm curious how they're going to do that and because I think they the PG thirteen, yeah, it's like a how they woman body it. covered in fur. It's yeah, sort of, I don't know how they're going to. Anyways, hmm. okay. Yes. Well, when is that coming out? Do we, does anyone know? Do you guys know when the Wonder next Wonder Woman two is supposed to come? Uh, it's like in a year or two. Yeah, yeah, I, think I think that was more. I don't, I don't even know if they started filming it yet. I think it's just like, hey, we've decided on a villain. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I know that you Star Wars and Marvel fanboys don't know anything about this guy, but I was just a little bit pumped to hear that there is also a Lobo movie in the works. So oh, I didn't even know that was a DC thing. Holy cow! Yeah, if you're if you're unfamiliar, he's basically an intergalactic bounty hunter. He was used as a villain in the '80s, straight up villain. And then with the popularity of Marvel characters, again, they, the photocopier is going at DC, which is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But with the popularity of characters like Wolverine, Deadpool, anti heroes, they sort of brought him in as an anti hero. But they were they were almost parodying what marvel was doing so Mm -hmm. they they went a little over the top kind of like the current movie version of deadpool was a little over the top Mm. and inexplicably people loved it and ate it up and it became very very popular so who is lobo i'm I'm totally lost what is it what's a lobo oh it's he's he's like a uh he's an alien from some planet he's a horrible horrible person but he's almost he's almost again he's almost like a superman he's a superman villain because he's supposed to be like that level of strength 
Yeah, he's very um, humanoid looking. He, he's got like pale skin, long black he's hair. He's ugly. I, guess, I don't know if they've changed him in the classic ones. He was an awful, awful person. He he's the last. He claims to be. He always, he's one of his lines always that he's the last of them race because he killed everybody else on this planet. Yeah, just so he could be the last. I'm sorry that everybody on your planet died. Oh, don't be. I killed them. Yeah. It's an interesting <laughs> uh, direction for them because Marvel is doing the Venom movie. You know what I mean? Another anti-hero style approach. You know what I mean? Hmm. So, it's so are you excited for this Lobo movie? It sounds like you kind of are. I am kind of because I'm hoping that they strike the balance similar to Deadpool where they're cracking enough jokes. They're not going too dark on the dark end of things mm-hmm. so that you sort of enjoy the character. Like that's the careful balance you have to strike, right? And I'm curious. So just, also, like you say, if they can hit a PG-13 rating, it appeals to a wider audience. You get the same Deadpool audience plus everybody else who maybe didn't see it because of its R rating. So, so does he have like I, a unique story tie-in? That we, other than I, I don't know. So this is where I go, and I, maybe you know more about Lobo's story. I've always felt like he's sort of just a – he is just – to me, he is a just a Superman bag, villain. Right? You just – you pop him up to like, hey, let's give somewhat Superman someone really strong to beat up on that you don't feel bad because he's such a bad guy. So I feel like to me, he should pop up as – in a Superman sequel, which Superman needs, um, that he should just be someone very strong that Superman can really unload on. Because I feel like again, again, we in Superman movies we have not seen him really unleash the Superman like strength. Um, uh, Say that to General Zod, David. Well, <laughs> in the current ones, like some of these <laughs> old, like some dipper. of the classic Christopher Reeve <laughs> ones, I feel like they did kind of show. Uh, him really pushing himself to the limits and those with the, hey, can I throw this out there real quick, guys? So I was reading an article that, um, yes, David, in, is it Superman 1, I believe, uh, where he travels, oh. he goes around the earth. Remember oh, that? This, this is earth shattering news. Everybody pay attention. Classic, this is huge. Classic yes. Your world is about I, to change. I have spent David, decades mocking, I have spent decades mocking the scene where he flies around the earth so fast. And, and I, I love the special effects in the 80s. It's awesome, but I'm like spinning around the earth so fast he turns the earth backwards. And makes time go backwards to back where he can save Lois Lane and save and stop the missiles that destroy like the eastern coast of the United States and different things. And I'm like, oh, that makes no sense that they were spinning backwards. They would just destroy the and whole planet, right? I was reading a thing this, where a guy said, my friend told me that that's not really what it is. He's flying so fast, he's traveling backwards in time. You are seeing the Earth rotate backwards as it travels backwards in time. And I'm like, oh my oh. gosh. <laughs> Boom. That dude that made the movie is now a genius in my mind. Yes, he showed <laughs> what it would I look like so if much. if Superman traveled back in time. Super- the world would start to go backwards because he's in, traveling so back that, in time. In the, the Earth comic isn't logic, traveling back in time. You, he he's is. flying so fast, and that comic logic of like once you break a certain speed of light, you, you travel, travel back, back in time. time. Yeah. He is doing it because you see him. He is pa- he's going so fast. He's passing. You he's see coming. him. He's a flash of light going he's, around the sun. Yeah. Oh, like I almost wish like like twenty thirty years of my life has been wasted thinking that that was just kind of a a story hook that you just had to buy into to enjoy it. But no, no, he's just traveling back in time, and so the Earth would go backwards. It would look to go backwards, even Don't though you just wish you could fly around the Earth fast enough to go back and tell yourself that right before yeah. you watch yeah. the movie. <laughs> it's not yeah. cheesy. It's freaking brilliant. Yeah. So, anyways, if you've <laughs> been like me and made fun of that scene, think about it in a new light now. Yeah. Oh. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Now, Bam. if you rated that movie, whatever you rated that movie, knock it up and uh, a couple you know, more notches uh, because it was right it there. was ahead of its time, right there, ahead of its time. time. Yeah. That's right. Whoo, whoo. So anyway, uh, dang, mind blown. There. Mind blown. So just from now on, when Dave says, "Can I say something?" You let him talk. Cause but anyway, so yeah, I uh, mm-hmm. anyway, yeah. so yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I got off track about Lo- Lobo, but Lobo, yeah, I just, I to me, I just don't see how they can make a whole movie about Lobo. I feel like he is just a Superman villain that they should show up, but maybe okay. it will be cool. If you'd have asked me approximately two weeks ago if they could make a whole movie out of Venom, I would have said no too. So I mean, I'm still not sure they can. I feel we'll like see. he's just a Spider-Man villain that he either beats but up. But Tom or Hardy is Venom, dude. Tom Hardy's a good actor. I, I do look forward to seeing. Him. Anyways, see what you can yeah. Do. I mean, I'm sure he'll carry whatever can be carried. But Harrison Ford is, is also a great actor, but he has been in movies that weren't good movies, and mm, it's not his true. fault. I mean, yeah, I think classically true. he was in some movie David, where it's not just his step fault. back, okay? Step back from Harrison Ford, okay? Okay, I will step away. From, step. I will step okay. away and put down the Harrison Ford. <laughs> so it seems like we're being inundated with DC news, which is okay with me as the DC guy. But uh, so can I throw out the, one I've heard? Yeah, I was going to say you, you, you brought that one too. Yeah. So here's something I'm super excited about: Mark Hamill. Our beloved Luke Skywalker, who was treated so un, so poorly in 
Last Jedi. Uh, he has expressed some interest in being in the next Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Mm. And I guess he must have tweeted it or something somewhere because then Twitter and social media also exploded saying, yes, please put him in the movie. The director of the movie, Peter Gunn, Peter Gunn, also wants him in the movie, said, yes, I would love that. So uh, I'm not sure where it stands right now, but I would love to see him in the movie. I don't know what role he would play or how it'd be, but I really want to see Mark Hamill. In oh, my Guardians gosh. The, the, the one good takeaway from uh, Last Jedi was that you saw Mark Hamill acting in a broader range. It was terribly written. And I would, anyways, I would undo it in a heartbeat. But Mark Hamill can act. I think we've been robbed of his acting ability or something because he's really good. And I would love to see him more in anything. I think he's a good yeah. actor, and I'm, you know, su- such a big fanboy of Luke, of course. I'd love to see him anything. Uh, but in the Guardians of the Galaxy 3, holy cow! Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah that, that was his brilliance freaking- in the Last Jedi interviews, was somehow, in all the interviews, he made enough offhanded comments to tell the fans, I'm still with you. Yeah. I'm still <laughs> yeah. your Luke. I'm still your Mark. Yeah. I was in this movie, yes, and I understand how you're going to feel. So uh-huh. I say that to say, despite our feelings about the movie, you can do nothing but wish well to Mark Hamill. Like, I mean, if he if he can spin this into yeah. bouncing around in the greater Disney universe now, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He was in a lose lose situation with these new movies. If yeah. he refused to do them, saying I disagree with those, we all hate him because he refuses to be Luke Skywalker. If he does them and they don't write the character well, then he also loses. Right? Yeah, so he yeah, he, no he totally was. He had he had to do what he did. But, but okay, I, I'm excited. So we're, to we're more, not, this is not DC news, Dave. You totally got us off page. Yeah, like well, I said, it we was go, brilliant. We going it was to... brilliant. Oh, I thought there was one more big DC news, right? Well, you had mentioned uh, something about a Batgirl movie. Batgirl movie, which I am excited <laughs> for. It made it even happen. I, so there was rumors that Joss Whedon was starting to write. Was He said, hey, write a Batgirl movie. He came back. We And I don't know. I feel like you're going to hear after the movie, at some point in two years, three years, you're going to hear all the, everything that I say today is incorrect. And there's other news. But... Um, <laughs> I don't know. You nailed the cheetah thing, so we're right on board. With okay. You now. Well, so Joss Whedon, they, they asked him, "Hey, write a Batgirl movie." Um, after Dave some months, the he came back and said, "Oh, I still don't have a story, guys." So then he inexplicably, here's the part: he just stepped away. And they don't say he was fired, and they don't say he actually. He said he just sort of was like, like the two faded away from each other. You know, they just weren't communicating well with each other. The relationship broke <laughs> down. I don't know. Went their separate ways. Um, I, you would think Joss Whedon but now could I've, do whatever movie he wanted in a superhero well, action the, i've heard that they were looking yeah. strong for a female director which i guess is fine whatever i uh, hopefully they look for a good director and if she's a female that is good too but, uh, um, <laughs> right but i am super excited for the movie because i think barbara gordon batgirl is a very interesting character i love her transition from barbara gordon the police commissioner's daughter to superhero working with batman to then Oracle and then spoiler alert. And then, yeah. And then <laughs> uh, it, even more spoilers. She eventually in the new 52, I don't, I don't know about the new, new DC stuff, but she makes it back to Batgirl. And I really like her character. And I've always thought she's very, cause she, again, yeah. is one of those people that, um, in no matter what capacity I can, I want to be choosing to write it help helping Batman. How can I help? I will, I, this ability was taken from me. How can I help in another way? I'm going to keep helping them. Out. And I, I like that yeah. strong willed nature that, desire to yeah them. yeah i didn't i had no idea you guys blew my mind the other day when you told me that she was the oracle oracle because my only exposure to to batgirl was the old pow zap kaplowy <clears throat> version yeah. with the flowing red hair in the back and the little moped scooter that they tried to make look awesome in that old show yeah. i love that old show by the yeah, way no, she's I'm a... such a doof for that <laughs> old show is no matter how horrible and bad that old show is with the kaplowy and the what and you know whatever like i they're so all in and over the top. I just, I find myself entertained every time I watch those episodes. Oh, I love, but I the Barbara Gordon character in there is good. Yeah. I yeah. need my Batman intense and powerful. That's why. Well, the new arcs with her head, that's what you're saying. She gets, she, she becomes the Oracle, which means she suffers a horrible tragedy and yeah, is out of paralyzed. commission and yeah. she's sidelined, but she finds a way to get herself in the yeah. middle of the game anyway. And so, as Oracle, she's so which, awesome. She controls several super teams, you know, feeding the information, telling them where Which they shows be. that you can have strong character and you don't have to have a superpower. And in her case, she's yeah. not, she, not only does she not have a superpower, she has a, a severe disability and yeah. still contributes. So very cool story arc. So we hope that. I'd like to see a good, a good, 
<laughs> Batgirl yeah. movie. So now with him stepping away, does that mean they're not making one or they are? What are we announcing here? Uh, right? so no, I hope they, they are. supposedly are still making one. They're just looking for a different director and maybe someone to write the story. But I've heard that they really want a Batgirl movie, which I think if it's done well, you could do an amazing character arc if you timed Batman movies correctly and show her become Batgirl, show her suffer the tragedy. Become well, Oracle, if they're insisting, girl, if they're insisting on finding a girl to direct it, I, I think that makes it harder to get the movie made, just because yeah. there aren't that many girl directors out there. Period. And then finding a girl director that would be interested in making that movie and capable of making that movie good, you're just narrowing and narrowing down the pool. I'm not, you know, what I'm saying there's just not that many. It seems a little yeah, silly out just there to, just, to place a to start sort of a. Putting filters on the director, right? Saying, well, I'm only going to, you know, it's like searching for a yeah. car. I only want the red car with. I, I just want a good and, movie. I, yeah. I really don't care who makes it. I mean, half the time I don't know who the actors yeah. are or the directors are. I normally don't even care at all. I just want, I just want a good movie. But yeah, anyways, I hope, I hope that they could make the movie. I, it'd be great if it was made by a girl or not by a girl, but I hope that that one, any stupid, uh, whatever it is, you know, oh, we have to have a redhead being, playing it. Uh, uh, anything like that that keeps them from making the movie, I think, is a shame because I'd love to see it. If Likewise. the movie is made by a, um, you know, a dolphin that knows the character and shoot of the character of Batgirl in the Batman movies, <laughs> yeah. I'm fine with that. Yeah, you know, I don't care. I really if don't it's care. A good story and the action is amazing. Then I'll say, yeah, yeah, good job, dolphin. Yeah, <laughs> give that dolphin more work. <laughs> Maybe I'm a little dark side, but I'm pumped for it too because it's an opportunity. To introduce another Joker, so oh, oh yeah, right. Her, her storyline is inextricably twined in the comics, at least, with the Joker. So it's just going to be incredibly interesting to me to see whether or not we That's right. have to suffer Jared Leto again, or yeah. if we get somebody new. Well, as I say, her yeah. her story arc is really cool, and if you did make some Batman movies and. See, that's and, uh, the cool thing you could about have a Joker in there that doing it. But the best thing about Batman is he's got the best, most interesting villains. And if you do a Batgirl, she has access to all those same. I think they're also making a Nightwing movie, but I don't know anything about it. But I also really love the character of Nightwing. So I feel like this is where Marvel does it so much better. If Marvel was in charge, they would have started off with a young Batman movie, introduced the characters of Batman, uh, yeah. Batgirl and, and Nightwing or, or Robin, and then have him evolve to Nightwing. Mm-hmm. And they they would have done all this leading up to some sort Which of gives them a phase two universe yeah. movie, but here they're just throwing out movies that have the name Nightwing. Where did Nightwing come from? There's not been a Robin in any movie, right? It's and painful how willy nilly it is. Oh, like just is. no plan whatsoever. But we yeah. still hope. We still hang that's, on to that's where, whatever yeah. that's ray right. of hope that that's why I said possibly. Right, earlier I said about okay. I say we just scrap it and start over and build the universe. It's like phase one, Batman, phase two, like anyway. Yeah. So there you have it. That's our opinion on all the uh, the avalanche of DC related news, which brings us into our yeah. favorite segment: Who would, would win? win? Yeah. <laughs> uh, for those of you who haven't caught on, that is from Mike Tyson's Punch Out. By the way, I love that game. Okay, yes, so on, for today we picked out two randomly selected uh, opponents for our who would win, and they are Colossal Dave. Introduce our Titans. Up first, we have Galactus. Galactus you from the Marvel Universe, from Marvel Comics. He is a classic villain of a lot of people, mostly probably the Fantastic Four. Yep. He also does show up in the Infinity storyline. I don't know that they'll introduce him. It seems unlikely that they'll introduce uh, him in the uh, Infinity Wars. But he is a force of nature mm-hmm. uh, who who has an undying, unsatiable hunger that drives and kind of tortures him as an individual to consume planets Mm -hmm. so he is a planet eater and sometimes takes the form of a like a person and sometimes uh, we can't perceive him in his true state they say and or as in like a a planet going around eating other planets like a like a death star that instead of zaps them like eats them and sucks all the life out of them and they implode so this is a apocalyptic uh, a bad guy yeah like mm-hmm. he's godlike level power almost i yeah. mean he think of any superpower yep. Yep. he has it so 
just one more thing to describe him. He sometimes needs help while he's consuming, digesting a planet. He sends out a herald to go find the next one to, for him to consume. And that was how Silver Surfer came to be. Silver Surfer is one of the most powerful Marvel characters. And, and Galactus made him by bloop, zapping him with some a, the tiniest fragment of his own powers. And, so yeah, there you go. The most powerful and who's, who's Galactus, the world ender, the world eater, going up against Dave? So this character might need a little explanation from one of our... Uh, experts here, but Surtur uh, of the Thor comics. Yeah, we know Surtur. He was just in Ragnarok, yeah, right? He was just in Ragnarok. So there's six Surtur who's been defeated, waiting for the his uh, end of Asgard, sir. And then when he gets in par- connected with the Eternal Flame, he comes into Super Surtur, planet sized Surtur, thousand feet tall. Uh, yeah, and he's got that sword that's Twilight. Like, tw- it's got a name even. So if you name your sword, sword it's of doom, something, right? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but it's like invincible. It's kind of made out of some invincible thing, and he's got the power to destroy. You know, he's the, the doom of Asgard, right? So we, he... we put in true two world ending uh, Titans against you, Surtur, the the Asgardian Satan, shall we yeah. say? Devil. He's considered Odin level in power, right? Yeah. He's an even match for Odin, who is also you know the king of the gods of Asgard. So very, very powerful. Exceedingly yeah. A lot powerful. of people have said that Kathleen Kennedy doesn't like to be in front of the camera, but actually Ragnarok has proved that. <laughs> <not the> case. <laughs> so. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm oh sorry. I just <laughs> yeah. They did her makeup really well. She yeah. looks great. Not okay. at all. No. <laughs> that was so not nice. Not nice. Okay. <laughs> So, all right. My thought is, um, uh, man, that is that is like, okay, last time we did this, we said, man, planets are going to get knocked out of orbit. But yeah. the, but it, with these two colossi, like, like solar systems could get knocked yeah. out of orbit if these guys this are unleashed, right? Colonies. I mean, this I is like, huge. This is a big Is there skiff. a size fluctuation with Galactus in the comics? Yes. Is yes. that just a... Uh, artist by artist kind of thing. No, or is it's it, something he it's controls. Woven into his, okay, yeah, he, he can controls. Change yeah. the size yeah. of himself. He usually appears though. He, generally, when he's in a humanoid form, he appears larger than a planet. Like he big enough to grab the planet with his arms and yeah. absorb it into himself. Yeah. As a DC guy, my reference point for Galactus is as the final bad guy of the phenomenal video game Lego Marvel Superheroes. Mm. So Lego Galactus, <laughs> I'm very familiar with, oh, and in well. that. He's sized such that he is grabbing on to the uh, shield helicarrier. Okay. You know, yeah. with both hands. So that's yeah, why I asked. Because obviously when he that goes is... planet side, he's probably about that big. Sure. So anyways, but, in that form, him and... Okay, so Surtur kind of being... Uh, I don't know that... Galactus can't eat him, right? So they would really chain, tra- trade yeah, blows there. That sword know. whacking... Dang, I... And he's relatively invincible. So the Honestly, way to be I think sure. power level, they're probably equal. It just probably comes out to who maybe manages to pull off the right move at the right time. You know, who manages to... Can he knock off Surtur's uh, helmet? Oh, yeah. I thought it was just a huge eyebrow. eyebrow. Brown or whatever. It was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I want to I give it to... Um, let's see. Let's, man. I don't think it's a, a clear win by either one. I would say... Surtur's thing is the comeback fight, right? Like, he lost originally to Odin, then he comes back, destroys Asgard, and then for all eternity, Odin and Surtur are fighting each other every day and every night. They Mm -hmm. both get resurrected on the next day and fight each other to the death every day for forever. So that said, I say round one goes to Galactus. Surtur, on the comeback fight, gets the win. He does the old play dead thing, and then... Yeah. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like... But he kills Galactus dead, dead. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess I would need to have better quantifying of Galactus's sort of, whatever you want to say, cosmic or magical power. Because in my mind, it's like, size-wise, okay, whatever. Surtur has a weapon. Mm-hmm. You know? He's got a sword that's extended reach. That's cutting. That's everything else. You know what I mean? Well, he does, like, blasts and... He yeah, does a lot of like, like yeah, energy blocks think, and yeah. changing the properties of things. Uh, uh, that's the beauty of behind. He, he can the, get in the head, do the, mind games. Whatever and... comic book writer determ- came up with the phrase uh, <laughs> cosmic power is because now they can determine that as whatever they want it to be. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah it's kind um, of an open book, really. Uh, I feel like, so to me, I feel like I would probably give it to Galactus. Uh, yeah, I, could, I mean, I could see Surtur it. has been defeated often. Well, there you comics, go. Yeah. And, and Thor, even Thor has 
manage to defeat him. Not, maybe not kill him, but he usually in the in I think takes takes the loss. Or as a Galactus, you don't really ever beat him. You just convince him to leave, or you. You know, mm-hmm. I don't. When he that's has a fair, that's fight, fair reasoning until proven otherwise. Yeah. Galactus is unbeaten. Guy yeah, like Galactus is sort of. I may be forgetting some storylines or two, else. but yeah. usually it's some sort of a. He gets convinced or talked into like, okay, I don't feel like. Okay, I won't eat this planet. I don't feel like exerting this. Instead, yeah. yeah, this effort. So no, that's if a I really good point. To, I, yeah, I mean, how do you defeat Galactus? That's, that's a good point. It sounds like we're leaning towards Galactus. My takeaway from this would be. Uh, those two guys fight due to the size and scale. Doesn't matter what happens. We're all we lose. lose. Yeah. <laughs> we lose. Yeah. Everybody else loses. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very, very bad. Nobody's yeah. around to declare the winner. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I would lean towards Galactus as well. I mean. Okay. So what about like a, like I'm saying round two though? Do you think Surger in a round two would have the, now uh, that he knows his enemy, do you think? I don't know. I guess it would depend on how I, so I would love to see it. <laughs> Yeah, I would love to see it. Especially how awesome they I would made say, Surger I think, in the last uh, so, uh, uh, Thor movie. Yeah. Like, we dude, know that um, was... Galactus has like a hunger because his, his body, I guess the power. A ravenous right? hunger. So that if Surtur in... um, could make him use up a lot of the power and then come back, like on his next day resurrected, comes back yeah. with before Galactus could feed, maybe he could take him in round two. Yeah. Mm, yeah. There you go. Maybe yeah. so. Hit him when he's hungry. Yeah. Because I will say, to try and... You guys are wondering how the powers scale up. One of my all-time favorite Thor story arcs is when... Is it God uh, Bomb? Uh, well, that is a good one, too. But I, I don't think it's the same. No, it's a different one. Where Odin goes head-to-head with Galactus. Oh, yeah. And oh, it is I've never awesome. Heard of that. Yes. It's cool because... They're yeah. going after the same seed. The 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 seed of the what the spirit tree or uh, what, what it's called. whatever it's called. And Galactus becomes aware of it. He's like, that might satiate my hunger, and I want it. And Odin is like, heck no, I'm going to use it to break the cycle of Ragnarok. And and they actually, like, Silver Surfer is fighting Thor, and Odin goes up against Galactus. And they they fight each other on all these different levels. Like, they play mind games with each other straight. They're zapping. They're, they're going into each other's, like, emotions, history. But they're... At all levels of like of how gods would fight, and then all of a sudden Odin just gets mad. He's like, "Enough of this!" And he just Odin blows himself up to be the same size as Galactus, and just goes whack and headbutts them, <laughs> boom! <laughs> and he just he just like full on Viking headbutts Galactus, and they both get completely <laughs> knocked out, boom. Yeah. So if Surtur's equal to Odin, bam. I mean, well, it so is. Who it, so knew let me tell you this: Sir Anthony though. Hopkins was so powerful. <laughs> let me let me give you another story. I mean, just though. Nards, and they both completely knock themselves out and, and like land on this planet. There's an, another out. pretty recent storyline where thousands of years into the future, the Earth is sort of a wasted planet, and Galactus comes back and is like, "Finally, I'm going to take the Earth. You've you've put me out for so long. I'm going to take my revenge right now." Thor, mm-hmm. who is now the All Father. Possessor so of he's the Thor Odin. Force, yeah. and there's someone up one. I thought it was called the Odin Force. He's like, well, I've had it for so much longer than Odin's ever had it. Now it's the Thor Force now, uh-huh. um, and yeah, so he's again, he's now as powerful or more powerful than Odin, uh-huh. and he decides he's still the protector of Earth and starts mm-hmm. fighting Galactus, and Galactus is destroying him the entire time mm-hmm. until finally, I think it's the God Bomb uh, story arc. He that one where the guy it's was not, I, I not you read in the that. version of it I read it's not because uh, no. in the very well, it might be the spoilers for then and he, he goes and fetches this like weapon that we threw into a black hole because it was too powerful and that's the only way he can defeat Galactus as he goes to fetch this weapon that is I forget what it's called but it's like the black blade or something like that and it um, he oh, threw wow. it into a black hole because it, this guy the whole story arc is he's chasing this guy who's killing all of the gods of different mythologies yeah, yeah, yeah. across the world. But Galactus, the part of the version of that I've read, Galactus isn't in it, but maybe, maybe it's like a prequel part set up. To maybe it's, it. but I will say it, this in the, so, okay, we're it's totally in, it's dragging same, on this. Who it's that same Thor version good, of Thor, yeah, maybe a different is, story. Arc. So, so, but after the, the, the colossal headbutt of all headbutts and, and Odin like takes him out, like Odin goes back to like normal size and falls down and like, He's like, oh man, you know, someone's got to help him. I think, you know, kind of Galactus recovers a little bit better. Odin's like, eh, maybe I should do my little Odin nappy nap, you know, now. Yeah, but yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> at peak power. So I think we picked the right guy then. Galactus. Galactus. All right. Yeah. The solar system is no longer the same, but Galactus, boom, 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 you are 
on top. Very nice. Very nice. Shout out to uh, Mouse on Spreaker, by the way, who wanted more comic book deep cuts. There you go. <laughs> that was for you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, please post and comment. We love all sorts of feedback from everybody. Enjoy. Have a good week. Have a good one. See ya.